And that, of course, is exactly right. Everybody on the left trying to pretend that the IRS issue is not a real issue. It's not a real issue. And we're all supposed to pretend that it's not a big deal. Mark Halperin, who's no Republican, he's from Politico, and he said last week that if the scandal had happened under the GOP, it would be a national obsession. I think with a different administration, one that was a Republican administration, this story would be a national obsession. And instead, it's getting coverage here and a few other places. But Bob, it really Bob, deserves a Bob, lot Bobby, more questions. You're, you're agreeing. Absolutely. This, and if, if this had been, if they were targeting Democratic groups and had been a Republican president, I think we'd, it would be in the front pages of every newspaper for weeks. Now, even Democrats are beginning to realize that this scandal is absolutely toxic. Claire McCaskill is a Democrat from Missouri. She's in a vulnerable seat, and she's hoping to keep her seat in the upcoming election, and that means that she's now going to rip on the IRS chief, even though she had nothing bad to say about the IRS or any other branch of the federal government for years on end. Now, all of a sudden, she has seen the light. She's seen it. It's amazing. Just in time for the 2014 elections. Color me skeptical, but Claire McCaskill ripping on the well, I Well, obviously, I think he is doing a terrible job communicating. And obviously, they made huge mistakes in terms of how they've retained records and whether or not they've been up front about whether or not those records were available. But keep in mind, Joe, also, the conspiracy that seems to be being alleged here is that somehow this was being directed from the White House. No, the conspiracy that's being alleged is that the White House wanted something to happen. It magically happened. It doesn't have to be directed. This is something that's very important to take note of. It's very rare in American politics that a scandal brings somebody down. In fact, the only scandal that brings anybody down in American politics anymore is uh, Anthony Weiner's Weiner or some other Weiner story, right? Uh, Bill Clinton schlipping somebody. Because here's the, here's the thing about a sex scandal. You can't, you can't say that it was low-level staffers in Cincinnati. It turns out that if that was your junk on the internet, it was in all likelihood your junk on the internet. There's no way to disassociate from a sex scandal. I'm hard-pressed to think of another scandal that has actually brought down anybody unless they discovered cold, hard cash in, like, William Jefferson's freezer, right, which actually happened. Most of the time, there's, there are a few layers of plausible deniability between the bad actor and the, and the actual bad action. That's what happened with the IRS. President Obama basically went out there and said repeatedly and openly, yes, somebody should do something about these terrible Tea Party groups. The Citizens United decision from the Supreme Court has legitimized all of these terrible, awful, horrible, no good, very bad Tea Party groups. Somebody should do something about it. Democratic senators began writing letters to the IRS claiming, you guys, you, you have to do something about this. I mean, look at this. Then the IRS does something about it. And then Obama feigns shock. Why, that's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. A few weeks pass, I don't see a smidgen of corruption. This idea that there has to be a smoking gun for every conspiracy, why do you think conspiracies are successful? Any well-run conspiracy is not going to have a smoking gun. Just because there's no smoking gun doesn't mean that nobody got shot. It just means that there's been enough time since the shooting that the gun has been disconnected from the perp and that the gun is no longer smoking. I know that we all want to get the, the money shot when it comes to these scandals, but the reality is that there usually is no money shot. There are usually a series of, of pieces of evidence that amount to a broad-based conspiracy, but there is very rarely going to be a direct order. There's not going to be any email from Barack Obama to Lois Lerner saying, Lois, would you please take a look at those Tea Party, those tea party groups? Not going to happen. It just ain't. And just because that doesn't exist doesn't mean that Barack Obama was not in charge of his own executive branch. You know, I doubt that there were direct emails from Ken Lay telling Arthur Anderson to cover up everything also. He was still guilty, wasn't he? As I've said multiple times on the program, Don Corleone never has to give a direct order to Luca Brasi. In fact, he always uses euphemistic language. You notice that about the mafia. You know, we're going to make him an offer he can't refuse, is what he says in front of Johnny Fontaine. Is that a smoking gun? No. Maybe the offer that he can't refuse is he's going to give him three Porsches for free. But we all know what the offer that he can't refuse actually is. It's a horse's head in his bed. That's the way it works at the government as well. It is a mafia-esque organization because, honestly, the government is the mafia. It really is. The government tells you that unless you give them lots of money, they're basically going to allow you to suffer and they're going to allow you to be unsafe and they're not going to defend your property rights. Welcome to the government of the United States. 
Meanwhile, decay continues over at the Veterans Administration. A whistleblower spoke to CNN yesterday, talked about how the VA had falsified an enormous number of records. Well, if these allegations are coming from one of our original sources on this story, the actual keeper of that secret list, Pauline DeWinter, she is coming forward now because she believes a cover-up is continuing there. Pauline DeWinter, a scheduling clerk at the Phoenix VA, is coming forward because she believes she knows something that is frankly unthinkable. She says someone now is trying to hide the number of U.S. veterans who died here waiting for care. But don't worry. Don't worry. Thomas Lynch, who is the Assistant Deputy Undersecretary for Health for Clinical Operations at the VA, he says that the VA is a wonderful, tremendous system. Congressman, I value the VA system greatly. I think it is a good system. I think well, it's not a good system. How could you say? Tell I me. I think it is a, is a good, good system. system. Really, Congressman? Yes, I do. Not, not I if you're a veteran. It's not a good system. Good quality care. I think Dr. Clancy could not there. confirm to that, you here's the problem. That's that our the problem. system compares favorably with the private sector in terms of quality of care and in patient satisfaction. He can say that all he wants, but the private sector doesn't kill thousands of people simply because they don't get put on waiting lists. But this is how the federal government goes. Every, every system in the federal government is a good system because, after all, the federal government, according to President Obama, it's the only thing that we all share. Now, tomorrow night, you're going to want to be at a big event we're having. It's been, we've been pitching it for weeks, and it's, it's really going to be fantastic. You're going to want to be there. It's about freedom of religion. Is it under assault in America? The event will feature me. It'll feature Michael Medved. It'll feature David Bowes. It should be a really fascinating conversation about freedom of religion in the United States. And it will also feature some folks on the other side, a UW professor, a Huffington Post columnist, and uh, most controversially, Reverend Monica Corsero from Rainier Beach Methodist. She'll be there defending her attempt to leverage a gay scout leader into the Boy Scouts. So it should be a, a fascinating conversation. $15 to get in, $10 if you're a student. Go to KTTH.com right now. Final tickets are just running out. I mean, we are down to literally the last handful. So you're going to want to get in right now. As we continue here on the Ben Shapiro Show, is it time for a third party? A pretty prominent political figure says, maybe. Ben Shapiro Show, AM 770, KTTH, KTTH.com. This is the Ben Shapiro Show, AM 770, KTTH, KTTH.com. Sarah Palin is on the war path again. She is, uh, she is saying that the war on women actually started with her. And this is why Sarah Palin is still important to the Republican cause. For all the folks who think that Sarah Palin was a disaster for Republicans in 2008 and they think that she should just go away now, the reason that Sarah Palin is still important is because Sarah Palin is a woman. And because she is a woman, and we live in, a, in an age in which politics is for stupid people, people see Sarah Palin, they see a woman, and when she says things like, the war on women started with me, it allows people to get beyond the partisan war on women rhetoric in which Hillary Clinton, a woman who has attacked 12-year-old rape victims and defended her alleged rapid husband, you know, her alleged rapist husband, she, she claims war on women. Sarah Palin can claim war on women, too, and that at least takes the, the partisan stink off the term. The, the reference in that book, I think, was um, uh, more evidence of this war on women. Certainly the first shot over the bow in my campaign it was shot by Barack Obama and his ilk. No, they're the ones who want to um, essentially oppress women by keeping them dependent on big brother government to take care of all their needs. Part of the war on women, they started it. Well, Sarah Palin is actually saying that she's considering a third party now that, now that it's clear that there has been a war between the Tea Party and the establishment. We'll get to that in just a little bit, all these major primaries that happened yesterday. Sarah Palin says that uh, she is considering a third party. If Republicans are going to act like Democrats, then what's the use in getting all gung-ho about getting more Republicans in there? We need people who understand the beauty of, the value of, allowing the, th the free market to thrive. Otherwise, our country is going to be continue to be over-regulated, driving industry away, driving jobs away. We're going to be a bankrupt, fundamentally transformed country unless those who know what they're doing and aren't going along just to get along with those in power and being today the Democrats, that does no good. So, yeah, if Republicans aren't going to stand strong on the planks in our platform, then it, it does no good to get all enthused about them anymore. You know, I think that one of the big questions for the Republican Party is going to be just this. 
it doesn't matter whether the Tea Party actually could provide a third party infrastructure. I don't think they could. This is a two party system. I don't think that the, the Republican Party, with its massive amounts of infrastructure and cash, is going to go away anytime soon. I think it's unrealistic. However, it doesn't have to be realistic to pose a threat to the Republican Party. And what I mean by that is that the credible threat of a third party, the credible threat that a, that a Tea Party would rise that would take enough votes away from the Republican Party to put them in permanent minority position, siphon enough money away, to put them in negative financial territory, you know, that could actually force some change inside the Republican Party. So everybody's saying, oh, stop threatening third party. Stop pretending that the third party is going to happen. I want people to continue threatening third party. There has to be some sort of credible threat here. And when the Republican establishment is doing things like proclaiming that the Tea Party is racist to get Thad Cochran back into the Senate, then we got a serious problem on our hands. The Tea Party did not declare war on the establishment. The establishment declared war on the Tea Party. The Tea Party was originally directed at Barack Obama and the Democrats. It was not directed at Republicans. It was fellow Republicans who decided that they couldn't be associated with those uncouth idiots over in the Tea Party and decided they were going to take them down a peg. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Meanwhile, on the local level, Mayor Murray has now called a full city council meeting to discuss public safety. According to Cairo TV, he, uh, he wanted to call this, this full city council. It's only happened three times in the past decade. He says he wants to discuss public safety. He wants to discuss action to bring down crime. And so what does he want? He wants community centers and job opportunities for youth. In other words, let's spend a lot of money. Let's spend a lot of money. Murray had, had told local media earlier this month, quote, it's important to remember we have an epidemic of gun violence in this nation and this city. That's such a lie. That's such a lie. Gun violence across the nation and in the city of Seattle is down dramatically. It has been for years. We have issues of mental health and we have issues of too many guns in this country. No, we have issues of too many guns in the hands of bad people and too few guns in the hands of good people. If this is just the prelude to more talk of local gun control, Mayor Murray's going to have a tough time. Mayor Murray's going to have a very tough time. But Mayor Murray, who clearly wants to run for governor as soon as he possibly can, is, is making a big deal out of these shootings, and that's why he's calling these full public sessions. Doesn't the city council have anything better to do? Really? I mean, considering that they have a shortfall on their hands with regard to public transportation, considering that they are about to have a major shortfall on their hands with regard to his new preschool education program, Considering that they are spending an inordinate amount of money on public transportation, considering that the education system is less than what it should be, can, can they get off their high horses for five seconds and actually solve some of the problems in the city? They can't even get the streets fixed on time, and we're supposed to be worrying about the problem of national gun violence and $15 minimum wage and preschool that's universal for everybody. None of this is the purview of the government. None of it. But I guess since when has government ever stayed within its domain? Story out of Edmonds today. The Edmonds School District has now voted to ban sweet treats for student birthdays. Welcome to government protecting you from yourself because you're too stupid to handle your own health. The move is part of an 18-month wellness and nutrition study that started after a new federal wellness policy took effect.